So now we're off to Edinburgh to meet Chris, who's made a rather impressive Sudoku solver powered by TensorFlow.js combined with traditional computer vision techniques. So Chris, welcome to the show. And first off, tell us a bit more about yourself. What's your background? Hey, Jason. Thanks for having me. So um, I actually studied image processing about 20 or so years ago. I did a PhD in image processing. So that's my kind of background that kind of brought me here. And um, I was playing around with um, some image processing in the browser. I was building some self-organizing Christmas tree lights and um, realized that it's actually quite straightforward to capture images from the camera and do some image processing. And it got me thinking about a mobile app I'd written quite a while back that was uh, take a photo of a Sudoku puzzle and solve it on your phone. So TensorFlow.js, I realized that all the building blocks were in place now and I could actually build an end-to-end -end system that would solve Sudoku puzzles in your browser. So I decided to give it a go and see what would happen. That sounds awesome. So maybe we can go into a bit more detail on what you've actually created here. Sure. Do you want to see a demo? I can uh, show you yeah, it working. Yeah, that'd be great. So I've got it running uh, in the browser on my phone. And we can see it's uh, it's scanning the puzzle and solving it as we scan over the um, the images in the newspaper. So it works um, works really well and it's uh, it's really fast. Yeah, super fast, like pretty much instantaneous as you as you go over the grid there. Very cool. So what what are the algorithms you're using to make this actually work then? Sure. So there's um, there's some classic sort of image processing stuff going on. So we um, our main sort of bit before we actually feed into TensorFlow is to extract the actual image of the puzzle. So there's a few sort of standard sort of processing techniques we use for that. And basically, there's a lot of throwing away of information. So we want to get to a threshold image. So we just have a black and white image with pixels that are the printed pixels and pixels that are the background pixels. And then using that, we, we can extract the actual digits from the puzzle image and feed them into an OCR system. And I use TensorFlow JS to actually do the OCR. So that was um, that was really interesting and it, it worked sort of really well. And on, on that note, actually, that's interesting to dive in a bit deeper there. Like what, what did you decide uh, to use machine learning for versus not? Like what was the what was your decision pattern there? Like why did you use the ML for the digits, but maybe not the Sudoku um, grid itself or something like that? Sure, yeah. So mainly I kind of knew how to I knew how to get to the point where I had the Sudoku grid extracted. Mm -hmm. And then the actual OCR bit was the bit that I wasn't really sure how to actually solve using classic techniques. So there are there's ways to do it, but they're not necessarily very accurate and they're quite sort of old school now. And so the way to do sort of OCR nowadays is to use kind of neural networks and, and more sort of deep learning techniques. So I kind of knew that I had to use some kind of deep learning for, for the actual digit recognition. And um, TensorFlow seemed like the obvious choice, especially with TensorFlow Lite being available, TensorFlow.js being available, I could I could just run it on the browser. Excellent. That sounds cool. So um, did you use an off-the-shelf model? Did you create your own? What architecture did you use for the digit recognition? Sure. So I rolled my own. I wanted quite a simple sort of model, so I could definitely run it on the browser without any performance problems. So I ended up with a an input layer that's a convolutional layer, so a conv 2D with 16 filters and a kernel size of 3. And then I fed that through a dropout layer to stop any overfitting. And then that goes into a fully connected layer. And then finally that goes into the output layer, which just has a softmax activation function with the with the nine outputs, one for each digit. Awesome. And and, and um, is this something you invented yourself or is this kind of a, from a blueprint somewhere? Did you have a background in ML before this? Um, I've done a few courses on ML. So I'd um, I've done a few on sort of Udemy and Coursera. So I had a vague vague idea of what I should do and then found quite a few examples on the internet of kind of simple sort of models for image recognition. So I sort of took some of those and repurposed them for what I needed and then just tweaked the model and tried to make it as small as possible while still getting sort of good accuracy. Perfect. So once you've got the network working, um, what was the accuracy of this? Sure, yeah. So it was um, surprisingly accurate. So I ended up with sort of 99% accuracy on on both the sort of training and the validation sets. So that was that was really pleasing. Um, it was interesting, the the images that it failed on were sort of ones and sevens, particularly sort of where the font was 
quite sort of um, esoteric fonts or quite strange fonts with sort of italic ones, sort of very bold. So they looked like sevens. Um, there was one image of an eight that was recognized as a seven. And when I looked at it, I could see that even I would kind of think it was a seven. So it was it was interesting <laughs> yeah. to see where the neural network failed and where it was sort of confused. It was it was just like a sort of human would be confused. So that was that was quite pleasing because I knew then that it was probably going to work quite well on on lots of different characters. Awesome. And, and what did you use to train the system with? Did you um, like take lots of images of Sudoku puzzles, or how did you go around that? Sure. Yeah. So I did. Um, I did think about buying lots of newspapers and taking lots of photos. And then I realized that that would take me quite a long time. So in the end, I um, I downloaded about 100 fonts from Google and then just generated small images with digits in them and um, tried to sort of vary the sort of background and add a bit of noise to make it look like a printed sort of digit. And then just let that run for quite a while and just generated thousands of images to train on. Very cool. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of this kind of data augmentations kind of being used these days, especially in the JavaScript community, which traditionally hasn't done so much about kind of stuff. So it's mm. great to see someone using this and getting great results with it as well. That's really cool to see. Yeah, I was, I was pleased that the sort of simulated data actually worked sort of well in the real world, because I know sometimes that can be an issue where you, you make up data, but it's not realistic. So I was quite happy that it did seem to actually match what was sort of in the wild. So it seems to be working super fast at solving the puzzles, but how is it actually happening? Yeah, so once we've done the OCR, we've got the digits for the puzzle. So then it's a case of feeding it into a Sudoku solving algorithm. And I'm using something called Dancing Links, which is originally by a guy called Donald Knuth, who's pretty famous in computer science. And it's a, it's a really fast um, algorithm for solving Sudoku puzzles. So there's, there's lots of information uh, on the web on how this works. And it... Uh, it's really worth checking out because it's quite a quite a famous algorithm and he's quite a famous guy. So that's a definitely one to look at. So it's really interesting to see like how you put all this together. And I'm curious like how you go about breaking down these problems in your mind. Sure, yeah. So there are there are some sort of standard image processing techniques that you can apply. So I always try and break it into a sort of simple set step it into a simple set of steps that you can sort of put together into a pipeline of image processing so there's kind of thresholding binarization there's things for extracting sort of objects from an image so it's quite once you know those techniques it's quite easy to build a pipeline that you can then stick together as a set of yeah. building blocks yeah and I, I love like how the machine learning is used here for a very specific purpose but you've got all this other computer science going on that actually makes the program as a whole and for those of you interested uh, chris has made a really cool video that goes into much more depth of how he broke this particular problem down so i do encourage you to check that out and we'll put the link in the description as well um so if people want to try this out right now is there a website they can go to to do so yeah so they can there's a site called sudoku.cmgresearch.com. I'll send that over to you. And that should work on, on any modern sort of phone and it should just run in the browser. It will ask for permission to use your camera and then you should be able to scan Sudoku puzzles. It does run on the desktop, but you obviously have to hold up newspapers to your sure. webcam, <laughs> which looks a bit silly. So, <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, we'll put that in the description after this show and do go check that out, people who are watching back at home. So looking to the future, is anything in the pipelines for this project progressing? Sure, yes. I'm really interested in um, removing some of the classic image processing and replacing it with the neural network. So I do wonder if you can sort of push the neural network lower down in the stack. So get the neural network recognizing where the puzzle is, maybe even make it work end to end so it recognizes where the puzzle is and recognizes the digits all in one neural network. I think that would be really interesting to experiment with. Uh, I will have to work out how to simulate lots of Sudoku puzzles in printed newspapers, which I'm not quite sure how to do yet. Uh, otherwise, it will be taking lots of photos, which um, sounds a lot of work once again. <laughs> <laughs> That's super cool, though. I'm interested to see where that goes. Uh, are there any other projects coming out? Sure, yeah. So I've been playing around with a, a voice-controlled robot. And um, one of the limitations with it is that it's running on a microcontroller, so there's a limited vocabulary that it can respond to. So I'm quite interested in controlling it from the browser. And I think with TensorFlow.js, there's a few models for word recognition. And I think I can make quite a powerful sort of voice controlled robot 
by doing that. So I'm quite quite excited by that next project. That sounds awesome. So great work. Thank you so much for being on the show today and look forward to seeing what you create in the future. Thanks for having me. It's been really fun.